Good morning, you guys. I am coming to you to update you on our PGTA testing of our embryos that we had done um, after our second egg retrieval. I just wanted to come back and um, let you guys know how those results turned out, um, what that means for us moving forward, um, and you know what are what are our next steps. So, <clears throat> just to recap. We um, did an, our second egg retrieval um, in July, and we were able to retrieve 25 eggs. Out of those 25, 22 were mature, 14 for, formalized, 14 fertilized normally, and um, 11 of them made it to blastocysts. So those were biopsied and sent off for testing and cryopreserved. So. Um, I'm going to go over the results with you. I'm going to do like a voiceover because I'm going to show the document. I'm going to um, kind of give you the um, analysis that my doctor gave me. Of course, I'm not a scientist or an embryologist or whatever. So I'm just going off of what I remember that she told me and um, the research that I've done and what I, what I assume that these results mean um, in general and then what they mean for us. So... Stay tuned. I'm going to show you guys the document as I read over it and kind of go over the results and, um, and let you know, guys know where we go from here. So just stay tuned. See what we, what kind of babies we've made um, in terms of gender and the health of those embryos. All right, you guys. <music> Okay, you guys, so here is a, a screenshot of our test results. I'm going to go over these with you as best as I can, you know, given the fact that I'm not an embryologist, but just based on what I was told by my doctor and my research. So um, I'll go over the sample type briefly, the embryo results, the genders, the sex of the embryos, um, the morphology, the mito score, and the mito score ranking. Okay. Most of you who are watching this video probably have gone through or are going through IVF yourself. So you're probably familiar with a lot of these terms. But for those who are not, um, the, a PGTA report, just like what you just saw um, of an embryo, will either result in a normal embryo where its cells have 46 chromosomes, an abnormal embryo where it has extra missing chromosomes, or a mosaic embryo in which some cells of the embryo are normal and some are abnormal. So I'll touch a little bit on that um, more in a second. Um, but just going back to the, the result document. So the sample type, the they did a biopsy of the trophectoderm part of the embryo. So biopsies are only performed on this area of the embryo. And that is the section of the embryo that would form the placenta. So just letting you guys know that when they do biopsy these embryos, they are not taking cells from the part of the embryo that would become the baby. Um, it's the part that would become the placenta. Now, a uh, trifectoderm biopsy is, uh, it consists of them using a laser to make a small hole in the shell of the embryo. And then they retrieve uh, about five to 10 cells um, to send off for testing and then they freeze the rest of the embryo. So there are two types of cells in a blastocyst. You know, once the embryo grows to five days, um, it becomes a blast. There's the inner cell mass, which is just the part that develops into the baby. And then there's the trophectoderm, which develops into the placenta. Okay. So just to let, just you know, just to let you guys know that removal of those cells does not uh, disturb the part of the embryo that would become the baby, which I was concerned about that at first because it's something that you would think, you know, you would think about. So um, in terms of the type of um, results that we could get, so um, the embryos, once they're biopsied and tested, they'll either come back as uploid, uh, mosaic, or aneuploid. So uploid embryos have either no or less than 20% abnormal cells in the sample that was taken. Mosaic embryos have 20 to 80% um, of abnormal uh, cells in the sample. 
And then if there's 80 to 100% abnormal cells in the sample, then it is considered aneuploid and it um, will be discarded. It's not um, the type of embryo that any doctor would uh, recommend for transfer um, for a number of reasons. Now, um, as you can see on the document here, I had 11 embryos sent off for PGD testing. So in the first column, there's embryo numbers one through 11. Um, the results came out. I had, let's see, one, two, three, four, five uh, uploid embryos, which were normal embryos. Um, within that um, sample of 11, I had some that came back as complex mosaic, high mosaic, and uh, then I had a an aneuploid, and then I had a complex aneuploid. So, of course, the aneuploid embryos will be discarded. Um, uh, one of the aneuploids was uh, had trisomy four. I'm not really familiar with the different types of like the trisomies and what they mean and um, what the, they would manifest into if the pregnancy would come to full term. But um, the, I also had a complex aneuploid and I was told that means when it's complex, there's more than one issue. So as you can see, that uh, embryo had uh, monosomy six and XO and then trisomy two. Um, so in addition to um, the the aneuploids, there were one, two, three, four mosaic embryos. Three of them were high mosaics and one was complex mosaic. So going back to the com complex, that means that there were multiple issues. That one has um, high mosaic partial monosomy 7P and high mosaic partial monosomy 19P. I don't know what that means. The 7P and 19P, I would have to you know, like meet with a genetic counselor to get more details but you know of course that complex mosaic um i wouldn't want to transfer because of the number of issues now um when they talk about uh monosomy and trisomy um monosomy is there's one copy of a particular chromosome and a trisomy is three copies of a particular chromosome we're supposed to have two of each. So for that complex mosaic, it looks like there was partial um, one copy of 7P and a partial one copy of 19P. Um, for the high mosaic for embryo number five, um, there was a partial one copy of 4Q. And then for the high mosaic uh, for embryo number eight, there was a partial uh, one copy of 13Q. My doctor, um, initially I was, I said, you know, I just want to discard the, the mosaics, you know, um, I didn't want to take the risk after having gone through losses already. But, you know, when I followed up with her, she said, we'll just hold on to them for now. Um, because the funny thing about mosaics is that many times they can self-correct um, in utero. Most of the time, mosaic embryos either do not, you miscarry them, they do not, you know, grow to term, or you have a healthy baby and it was corrected, it self-corrected itself. So um, there's a reason why she probably told me to hold on to those. And I'm going to assume based on when we look at the area of the, the sex or the gender it's probably why. Now, if you look at the uploids, um, embryo one and two, embryo four, embryo seven, and embryo nine were um, uploid embryos, normal embryos. Out of those five, four of them were female and one was male. So I have one little boy, you know, a, a uploid embryo in there. Now, from the mosaics, um, the three high mosaics, I had two uh, males in there and one female. So have to keep that in, into account as well. But I'm assuming because we had that one uploid male, um, she probably wanted to hold on to those high mosaics. And especially since I'm still trying to figure out what protocol will work for me so that I can bring these pregnancies to term and not keep losing them. I'm assuming that's why she probably wants to hold on to those mosaics because they do have some form of our percentage of you know, success possibility tied to mosaic embryos. Now, if you look at the um, the next uh, column, 
which is uh, monosomy. Um, I'm sorry, not monosomy. It's uh, the the morphology. So morphology is basically the structure of the embryo, how it looks, um, with A being the best, and then B, and then C. Um, this is when they look at the embryos, making sure that they have the correct number of cells, they're impacted, they're not fragmented, um, that the embryo actually looks good. So um, from my Uploid embryos, I have, um, see the uh, embryo one and two are rated as an A. Embryo four is a B. Um, embryo seven is an A and embryo nine is an A. So that's pretty good. Um, the next column, the MITO score value um this basically helps to determine which embryo have the highest chances of implantation so what would be considered a good score they they say basically the lower the better um so for reference there was one study that showed that um, a score of less than 25 equal to an 85.2 percent pregnancy rate. So as you can see, just looking at the ooploid um, embryos that I have, um, we have a mito score of 12.81, 12.53, 18.29, 18.52, .18 and 17.74. So luckily for me, all of those scores are below 25, which I'm hoping gives me, you know, that 85.2% or higher pregnancy rate possibility. And then the ranking, they just put them in order from best, you know, you know, going from best and so on. So ironically, my little boy embryo um, is ranked at number one. That one has a morphology of A and uh, the high, the lowest mitral score, which equals to the best ranking. And then the girls followed. Um, so where do we go from here? Um, out of 11, having five normal, I, I would say that's good. It's a blessing, you know, at 38 years old. And, you know, a lot of women, unfortunately, do an egg retrieval and they come back and have none, you know, no, no embryos that are uploid or whatever. So I am very grateful for these results. Um, just being human, I, I did wish that I had more uploid males. Um, to choose from, I would have even been felt a little better about, you know, two versus three out of five. But, you know, you get what you get and you don't complain. Right. Um, so I'm grateful that I at least have some. Um, just for reference, I still have four embryos um, at my previous clinic that I was in. So I'm trying to decide what I want to do with those because those have not been PGTA testing. And any process of like thawing those, testing them, getting them transferred to, to my new clinic is extremely costly. And we just came out of pocket a lot, you know, for this second egg retrieval. So we're still trying to decide, you know, what financial... Uh, commitment we want want to make in terms of those embryos because we also have to pay, you know, for the yearly storage fee for those, and we just we just haven't decided. Um, but going back to to the test results and what our next steps are, we have not decided which um, embryo we wanted to transfer in terms of gender. If we will do male or female, or we will not choose at all and just tell her to randomly choose for us. Um, so that we can be surprised. So we're having those conversations now. Um, I'm not sure when my transfer will be. Um, we ran into, um, I had some more testing done and possibly have determined what could have been causing these um, losses. So I'll be coming back to do a video on that and what my next steps are for that. Um, part of the process. But until then, I just I just wanted to share this with you guys. Um, I'm grateful that you are even interested in listening to me talk about um, this process. It's been a long, very hard journey. And um, I'm, I'm just grateful to be here and to have this information to go off of. Science is amazing and God is even more amazing. So thank you guys for watching this video. And Please continue to send um, well wishes and prayers up for us um, as we continue to journey through this process. In the meantime, if you are not subscribed to my channel, please do so um, and follow me. 
like, share, comment, all of that good stuff so that we can keep the conversations going. And then so you can be a part of the, the many videos that I post tied to fertility, parenting, and also the other videos that I post tied to the other parts of my life. So until then, I will talk to you guys soon. And I hope that you have a blessed day, a blessed week, and a blessed year. All right, you guys. Ciao.